Go! Mrs. Tandy! Everybody! This will not do. Suppose the patient needed me in a hurry. Her mother's out. Mrs. Tandy's out. Even the fire's gone out. Like the gas, Edmund. Where's the girl? Um, she, she left Papa. She was dismissed uh, without a character. Why, poor little shrimp? Mama wouldn't say. There's bed linen all over your landing. Well, any daughter of mine worth her salt will put it away tidily. And you needn't look so smug, young lady. In times like this, your sister Dora knew how to make herself useful. Well, Sarah's a spoiled baby in this family. I despise you, Edmund Hughes. But it's rather jolly when she loses her temper. Here. Mind how you go. And if you must drop anything, kindly drop the dustpan. And where's Nanny? She went to see Dora and Captain Selwyn again. I haven't been invited for weeks. Confined to the nursery. Yes, well, uh, you'll probably deserve it. Even the coal scuttle's empty. Oh, no, just look at it. Go and fill it. What, sir, have you done to your trousers? Oh, I have, must have dusted the banisters on the way down. Hmm. That's the only part of the house that has been dusted. I shall want you in half an hour with your Latin prepared. I hadn't forgotten. Yes, Papa. And if Mrs. Tandy is still condescending to keep house for us, tell her to come in here. Knick-knacks and goo-gaws. Trivial godwatery. No wonder the servants leave. The Summers may have six pair of legs, but I'm not one of them. Ah, oh, Mrs. Tandy, Papa would like to see you in the study. Nobody's done in there yet today. Oh, the six pair of hands, neither. Enter. What's the matter now, sir? Mrs. Tandy, I am trying to read an article on the use of chloroform, and I can't see, because the globes haven't been cleaned in a month, and there is no oil in the lamp. I am paying 20 shillings a ton for the best coal. And does it keep me warm, Mrs. Tandy? No, it does not. Because nobody troubles to bring it up from the cellar. The brasses are dingy, the hangings are dusty, the silver hasn't been cleaned in a month. And I'm ashamed for my patients to sit in the waiting room. But apart from that, Mrs. Tandy, there's nothing the matter at all. But we've had other things on our minds lately, as well you know. I uh, don't suppose there's any news of Miss Dora, sir. Oh, she is uh, resting. Her looks are still blooming. And Captain Selwyn is proving the sort of husband who can't come into her room without uh, giving her a little present. She's had a pin tray, a new ribbon for her mandolin, and a gadget for peeling walnuts. And all since lunchtime. A lot of fuss about nothing. Uh, being a decent soul that looked after this past 20 years and knows how worry makes you tetchy, I'll see to it you're not neglected any longer, sir. Now, if you was to prescribe a good strong pot of tea for yourself, I might see my way to making it. Mrs. Tandy, how is it you always get the better of me? Practice, sir. I think I'll put the sofa into the parlour. Oh, stop messing about, Sarah. You must know. It's a genitive of characteristic. Say it again. Est agila scentis, maioris natu vereri. It's a young man's duty or something to respect his elders. Well, it can't be. There's nothing here says duty. That's the point. You have to pretend it's there. I've decided the dolls are going to have a new baby. I say, why are you confined to the nursery? What have you done? I'm bankrupt in frocks. Mama said she'd be mortified if patients or visitors were to catch sight of me. 
We must keep up appearances, Sarah dear. One silk dress like the cover of an old umbrella. One Swiss muslin soiled and three buttons off. And every gooseberry bush in the garden has had a share of this one. They're only fit for rags in a paper factory. Well, well why does Nanny not mend them for you? She's sewing every night. I can hear the Wheeler and Wilson going. Speaking of gooseberry bushes. Not Nanny. I had a peep in her work basket. Edmund, it's full of baby clothes. But, but she's old. And she hasn't got a husband. Wait a minute. Dora's been confined to the house lately, and it's just a year since she married Captain Selwyn. And she's not bankrupt in frocks. Dora? Well, she's only five years older than you. I thought you couldn't have babies till you were turned 21. Hey, Mum! Percy, it's time for Papa. What did you say it meant again? It's a young man's nature, perhaps, to respect nature. his elders. Eddie, you'll have to stop risking your neck if you're going to be an uncle. I don't, I don't feel like an uncle. If I'm going to be an aunt, I better try and mend a frock. Hey, Mum! Uh, coming, Papa! Nescire quid antiquam natus sis accidurat id est semper esse puerum. Meaning? Uh, not to know what happened before you were born, that is to be a child always. And do you agree with Cicero? Yes, sir. <laughs> Sit down. Is your sister not coming to join us? Uh, no, she's sewing. Is she indeed? <laughs> oh, well, girls don't have much of a head for Latin, do oh, they? Sarah's quite clever to Papa, only she's taken a notion that, that she may need to look respectable when, when she's an aunt, sir. <laughs> well done! You know, your mother would have it a secret, but I knew you'd find out. When is it to be, Papa? Any time now. Oh, is Dora well? <laughs> Sound as a bell. Nothing to worry about at all. <laughs> oh, oh uh, yes, so well, it's uh, probably not important. Uh, Adolesco? Uh, grow up. Uh, Adultus? Uh, have, having grown up? Look, stop listening for Mrs. Tandy. Uh, we shall know one way or another if she brings me my hat. Uh, Natus Ero. I shall be born. Oh, no, 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 no. The other one, uh, future simple tense passive voice. Ferro, I bear. Um, Ferrar, Ferreris, or Ferreri, Ferreria. <laughs> he, she, or it will be born. Or carried. Go on. Uh, Ferramus? Oh, uh, think, boy. Uh, well? It's only the housemate from Cornerstone, sir. Says our master can't get his breath and has a rattle in his chest. Housemaid. Housemaid? What are they? Thought they'd all vanished. Framo, framini, ferentua. Uh, yes, Papa. I'm all behind today, like the cow's tail. It's a good thing I met the muffin man on the way home. Oh, Nanny, let me toast the muffins. I don't think I quite heard you, dear. Please. Hmm. Oh, my, oh, my, it is blown together. We'd better unpick it after tea and start again. I think my stitches look very smart. A good needler would never let her stitches be seen at all, dear. Oh, no, see cake again. There's many a poor boy would be grateful for that, Master Edmund. I want it I, to... I want gets nothing. It's true, Sarah, about the baby. I asked Papa. Wicked Nanny, you knew all along and never told us. It's not my place. Well, what shall we have, Nanny? A boy like Captain Selwyn or a girl like Dora? You'll have a muffin and make the best of it. My, my, very sharp we are today. Someone must have slept in the knife box. There's someone not a hundred miles away from here, Master Edmund, who is getting beyond himself. <laughs> <laughs>